Interpretative Phenomenological Analysis or IPA is an important and very interesting type of qualitative research. In today's session, we will have an introduction to this interesting qualitative type of research. So we will respond to the question of what, why, and the how of IPA. So first of all, what is IPA? A qualitative type of research with a focus on an in-depth ideographic exploration of people's personal lived experiences that have psychological implications. So this interesting type of qualitative research is generally conducted in the field of psychology, mainly because it deals with humans' lived experiences that have lasting and significant impact on their lives in general and on their psychological well-being in particular. The pioneers of IPA include Smith, Flowers, and Larkin, and they define APA as a type of qualitative research which aims at detailed examination of personal lived experience. So IPA is basically an offshoot of phenomenology. Uh, and phenomenology, as many of you might know, is a field of, uh, of, of human knowledge that was uh, pioneered by Edmund Husserl and Heidegger. The aim of phenomenology um, actually is to develop in-depth contextual understanding of individual experiences. So the phenomenology again has been uh, differently uh, defined and so there is a kind of division um, among the philosophers um, and the researchers who have defined phenomenology. The descriptive, so there are two distinct uh, uh, approaches to the understanding and the use of phenomenology in research. The descriptive phenomenology is, was actually pioneered by Edmund Husserl. And the focus of descriptive phenomenology was on the objective description of human experience and actually bracketing out of the researcher's personal positioning or interpretation. Uh, so you can say that this was a more objective approach to phenomenology where the researcher's personal interpretation um, and their theoretical background had very little to do with the analysis and interpretation of the data. So the descriptive phenomenology or the research studies that adopt descriptive phenomenological designs are generally theory driven and the approach taken is more objectivist. On the other hand, the hymenetic phenomenology, which, is, which was actually pioneered by the Martin Heidegger, with a focus on the importance of researchers' interpretation. Um, and so the hermeneutic phenomenologists, uh, mainly led by Martin Heidegger, rejected the idea that there is possibility of bracketing out of the researcher's position, out of uh, and so, so the personal positioning of the researcher in terms of the data analysis and interpretation was something that was not acceptable to the hermeneutic uh, philosophers or researchers. This type of, um, or this approach actually is data driven and is based on subjectivist approach to understanding social phenomena. IPA is basically an offshoot 
of this, this, this second approach to phenomenology, the hermeneutic phenomenology. And <clears throat> the interpretive phenomenology, uh, phenomenological approach, or IPA, basically revolves around ideography and, and actually hermeneutics, which actually means that the focus is on the individual and the focus is on actually the interpretation of the meaning by the researcher and the researched. Now the why of it, why is it that the IPA um, is, has become an important and interesting uh, research type in qualitative, mainly psychological studies. Well, IPA has become a popular qualitative research methodology mainly because of its focus on the real, the actual, and the contextual and detailed analysis of psychological phenomena involving personal lived human experiences. So as, as we know that generally research is something that is considered as kind of dry process and product of knowledge creation. So in this case, uh, this has become popular mainly because the, the focus is on a more lived experience and real experiences of people. Distinctive features of this method also include that it focuses on the psychological aspects of lived, lived experience and in real context with reference to how individuals make sense. Um, and so that's, we call that hermeneutics of the experiences and how the researchers interpret the sense making of individuals. So we can say that there is double hermeneutics. The first is that the research participants make sense of their experiences, so they interpret their experiences, and then the researchers make sense of or reinterpret the, the way the research participants interpret their experiences. So there is a kind of double interpretation in the uh, IPA process. The scope of IPA includes uh, psychology related fields such as health psychology, educational psychology, counseling psychology, etc. So generally we can say that this is a field that is related more to applied psychology where the, the practical experiences, life experiences of individuals are explored. Now to the last part of it, the how of it. So generally the IPA process is uh, very similar to other qualitative uh, research processes. So generally we have selection of participants uh, for our study. Generally purposive sampling techniques are used. So we select uh, participants in line with certain criteria because we are in search of finding people who have particular experiences. And the samples uh, the, the, um, uh, might vary from one to, uh, to some, um, around 15 or something, depending on the nature and scope of, of our study. Uh, but generally, we select individuals uh, who have a rich and detailed contextual uh, understanding of phenomena and who have gone through certain personal experiences. And the samples are, um, are uh, described in very detail by the researchers. The data collection tools generally include interviews, focus groups, and uh, journals or diaries of the participants. Data is generally analyzed using inductive analysis or bottom-up approach and thematic analysis is used which generally actually means making meaning out of the, the texts that, uh, that we get from the participants in the form of interviews or focus groups. Um, coding and theming 
is involved and then on the basis of those cores and themes um, in a kind of ideographic inductive way we get to conclusions and so sample topics could include topics related to experiences of individual experiences or group experiences of of pain or bereavement or suffering or other experiences that involve emotional type of uh, of uh, emotional type of responses on the part of the participants in order to have a deeper understanding you might want to read uh, relevant uh, studies and relevant uh, sources so here here are some suggested readings for you thank you very much for your time take care